Hello and welcome to a summary of all you need to know about the poem Remember by Christina Rossetti. I'll explain the meaning related to this poem as it appears in part three of the Pearson Edexcel International GCSE Anthology. Do bear in mind that, in contrast to part one of the anthology, which featured only non-fiction texts, and part two, which was a mix of fiction short stories and poems, part three of this anthology exclusively features poems alone, so in this video I'll highlight key language and literary devices used by Rossetti, and you'll learn how to analyse it. So let's get started. Now I will begin by reading through this poem. It's written in sonnet form, in other words, it's 14 line single stanza. And then afterwards, I will then point out important literary techniques and also contextual factors that you need to be aware of. Remember me when I'm gone away, gone far away into the silent land, when you can no more hold me by the hand, nor I half turn to go, yet turning to stay. Remember me when, no more by day, you tell me of our future that you planned. Only remember me, you understand. It will be late to counsel then or pray, yet, if you should forget me for a while and afterwards remember, do not grieve. For if the darkness and corruption leave a vestige of the thoughts that I once had, better by far you should forget and smile than that you should remember and be sad. Now, this poem has a really interesting title, Remember. So as I mentioned before, it's about remembrance and the poem itself in terms of the form it's written in is it's written as a Petrarchan sonnet. In other words, it's written using iambic pentameter and it's a really particular type of sonnet, which we call a Petrarchan sonnet because it has an A, B, B, a rhyme scheme in the first four lines, then again A, B, B, A in the following four lines, and then in the sestet it's C, D, D, and then E, C, E. So this is why we call it a Petrarchan sonnet because it has a very particular rhyme scheme. Now, contextually speaking, do bear in mind that Rossetti, Christina Rossetti herself, the poet, wrote this poem as a 19-year-old teenager. And do remember that not only was she very religious, but actually she never had a romantic marriage in her life. She engaged in a few relationships which did end. However, she never actually married in the end. Now, when we look at line number one, remember me when I'm gone away. Now, the repetition of the title, remember, shows that the speaker within this poem is really anxious about being remembered by their lover. Now, the whole line, remember me when I'm gone away, what this again emphasises is the speaker is really fearful that the lover may forget them once they die. Furthermore, the repetition of gone focuses on the death and distance that is making this speaker really, really anxious that once they pass away, the lover will forget about them. Now, the reference to gone away again in line one, this is a euphemism for death. So the speaker is contemplating on whether the lover will remember them once they die. Now, the reference to the silent land in line two, this personification of the land being silenced, what this shows is that there's a vast boundary between life and death, and the speaker feels a lot of anxiety that once they have passed away, the lover will stay in the present life and move on. Now, the speaker states, when you can no more hold me by the hand, and the pronoun here, she is addressing her lover using the second person pronoun. Furthermore, they state, you can no more hold me by the hand. Now, the alliteration here of H shows her emphasis on the romantic love and the companionship that she really craves from this person, but also she recognises that she's never going to be able to give them this sense of companionship once she passes away. Now, in line four, she says, nor I have turned to go, yet turning to stay. This is oxymoron because what this is showing is the speaker feels really conflicted about this process of death and how their lover will cope once they die. Now, line five, they repeat, remember, and this is repeated again in line seven and then in line 10. Now, this is anaphora and this anaphoric reference is a constant imperative. It's ordering their lover. You have to remember me. You have to remember me even once I die. Now, back to line five, when no more day by day. Now, this repetition essentially refers to the daily life, the mundane aspects of daily life. However, what the speaker is saying here is that even as you settle back into normal, regular existence, once I've passed away, you need to keep on remembering me. 
Now in line six, she states, you tell me of the future that you'd planned. Now what she's doing here, she's thinking of her lover's promises about the future. And in many ways, this is almost encapsulating the passive Victorian woman. Do you remember that Christina Rossetti lived during the Victorian era? And she's encapsulating here the notion of the angel of the house, the woman who looks after the household, who's the perfect angel of the house. And her lover essentially is the one that plans the future. And so she's alluding to this and essentially saying, you're telling me of our future. I still want that future to continue, even if I'm not around. Now in the following sentence, a caesura that's used here, only remember me. And this caesura shows that the speaker is pausing to emphasize the importance of him remembering her. Now, she then states, it will be late to counsel then or pray. So here, we sense that the speaker has a change of tone. Then this change of tone is further added when she states in line nine, yet if she should forget me for a while. Now, this uh, we could argue is the volta in the poem, the turning point, because actually she seems to actually change her mind about being really emphatic for her lover to remember her. Moreover, the conditional clause, if, She's thinking, hmm, if my lover forgets me, would I be okay with that? And it seems actually that she's changed her mind because she states, if you should forget me for a while. Now, this is an oxymoron to remember because she's now starting to recognize that maybe her lover might forget her and she's now becoming at peace with that. Furthermore, then Jean Beaumont here speeds up the pace of the poem in line nine and it shows the speaker's acceptance of maybe being forgotten once she passes away. Moreover, in line 10, she tells the person, do not grieve. She tells her lover, don't grieve, actually. And this imperative sentence is a slight shift because she's essentially saying, actually, I've changed my mind. Maybe don't be caught up too much in the past. In the following line, the darkness and corruption leave. So the reference to darkness and corruption, these are negative dark terms that refer to mourning. Perhaps the speaker here is now realizing that she doesn't want her lover to really mourn her too excessively once she's passed away. Then she states, better by far you should forget and smile. So there's a shift, a complete 360 in tone here because it seems that the speaker doesn't want the lover's life to stop once they've died. They've become quite reconciliatory. In fact, if anything, she's now encouraging them to forget about her once she dies, smile and perhaps even move on and even possibly find another wife. Moreover, there's the oxymoron forget and remember in the following line. And what this shows is that the speaker will not feel resentful if the lover moves on. Moreover, the sibilance and the oxymoron smile in contrast to sad. Once more, the speaker shows her acceptance that she's okay with their lover moving on. So that's all. If you found this video useful, do note that we have an in-depth extensive course covering all the texts and poems in parts one, two, and three of the Pearson Edexcel International GCSE Anthology. So make sure you sign up for this course for explanations on all the texts as well as model answers. Also make sure you check out our website, which is www.firststreettutors.com where you will find plenty of English revision worksheets, model answers, and online courses covering all the major English syllabuses, including Edexcel, AQA, and IGCSE. Thank you so much for watching.